Hello, welcome back to our OE circuit courses. In this episode, I'm going to introduce file systems and the file, their concepts, types, functions, and usage. Let's jump right in. General purpose computer must store multi format data on the hard drive or equivalent device such as a USB memory stick. File systems offer a systematic approach to file organization on the storage device, making it essential to both system administrators and everyday users. But what exactly is a file system? In the realm of computing, a file system is a data structure used by iOS that track and organize files on a storage medium or partition. A local file system can be described as an iOS feature that provides services to the applications running on the same machine. A file system is comprised of three essential layers, logical file system, virtual file system, and physical file system. The logical file system acts as the interface between the user applications and the file system itself. It serves as the user-friendly front-end to facilitate essential operations such as opening, reading, and closing files while ensuring consistent experience among application access. The file system and user operations the virtual file system enables the concrete operations of multiple instances of physical file systems. It provides a standardized interface, allowing different file systems to operate simultaneously. The physical file system handles the low-level details of storing and retrieving data, interacting directly with the hardware components. It ensures the efficient allocation and utilization of physical storage resources, contributing to the overall performance and the reliability of the file system. Linux supports a diverse range of file system types, each tailored to specific use cases and deployment. Let's explore the most common types and briefly introduce their unique features and benefits. X4 or Force Extended File System is the most widely used and de default file system for many Linux distributions. It is the successor to X3 and comes with many imp improvements, including better performance, increasing file size limits, and faster checks. BTRFS or B3 File System was created to address the limitations of old file systems. It offers features such as snapshot support, data deduplication, read, and online defragmentation. BTRFS also supports on-demand expansion or reduction of the file systems, making it a flexible choice for both single and multi-drive setups. XFS is a high-performance journaling file system that excels in head-only large files and, in, and massive storage volumes. Initially developed by Silicon Graphs, XFS is now used in many Linux distributions due to its exceptional scalability and stability. In Linux, everything is a file. That means data and hardware resources, including hardware devices, process, sockets, and links, are presented as a file. To manage such diverse file types, Linux structures directories in a tree-like hierarchy. Referencing those directories when accessing them is accomplished by using the sesquition deeper directory names connected by forward slash. For guidance on established Linux directory structure, we should talk about the Linux File System Hierarchy Standard, or FHS. In this discussion, I'll briefly explore some of the prominent and specified top-level Linux directories along with their designated functions. The root file system is the top-level directory of the file system. It must include all of the required executables and libraries required to boot the remaining file systems. 
The Bing directory contains user-executable files. Boot contains the static bootloader and the kernel executables and the configuration files required to boot a Linux computer. The lib directory contains the shared library files that are required to boot the system and dev contains the device files for every hardware device attached to the system. In any Linux system, each file or directory in the file system is associated to a data structure called the index node or inode which stores the attribute and disk blocks, locations of the object data, such as file size, owner, permission, and the time steps. Every inode entry within the file system possesses a distinct integer identifier known as the inode ID. With the inode structure, pointers to the data blocks responsible for storing the file contents are present. Let's see how the inode helps us retrieve a file. When we enter the cat command, Linux search for the inode ID of the var directory in the node root directory and integrates data of var based on the ID. Then the system searches for again the inode ID of text test and collects data blocks based on the inode pointers to finally uh, obtain the file data. In summary, to read a file, the system must locate the inode ID and assemble data blocks into memory according to the inode pointers. To create a file, the system must allocate an unused inode to the file and record the file directory using the their inode ID. Following this, the system identifies unoccupied data blocks and directs the you know the pointers towards the blocks. Now let's dive into the system management and utilization. Linux offers an array of commands to streamline those processes. Below, I'll highlight a selection of these commands for your convenience. The df command is used to query the drive usage of a file system. With the h option, it presents the file system size in a human-readable format, while the I option reveals the inode details. The du command queries the drive usage of a file or directory. When combined with the A option, it reports the drive space occupied by each file across directories or subdirectories. The S option summarizes the total drive usage and the H option outputs the file size data. To display all files that have been opened upon boot, we can use the isof command, a command that needs to be executed by the root user. Since everything is considered a file in, in Linux, we should understand what a file is. In computing, a file is a resource that records data and a, a computer storage device primarily identified by its file name. A file name generally contains characters, digits, and special symbols, and its format and length comply with the system standards. A system may contain diverse file categories. For example, file permissions are classified into read-only, read-write, write-only, or unauthorized. When considering temporary aspects. Files can classified into temporary, permanent, or archive. From a device perspective, file types include those associated with hard drives, tapes, disks, and floppy disks. Files are a significant advancement in computer data management. They enable direct access and storage of information by simply knowing the file name eliminating the need to recall the physical storage location or the specifics of storing data on a device. Files can be stored secure in a file system that offer multiple security measures to safeguard file integrity and prevent unauthorized alternation or theft. In addition to the backup sharing of files, 
In the event of exception during file execution, file systems can reorganize data and rerun the files, greatly improving stability and reliability, while file sharing improves file utilization and conserves file space. That wraps our today's session. We hope you found it informative. Remember to join our community forums and don't forget to stay connected to our social accounts. Thank you for watching and goodbye.